Hi there, Matt Allington here and in my short video today I'm going to share with you some of the things that I really like about the new Tabula Editor, the third edition. Now this is a paid version of Tabula Editor. I have blogged about Tabula Editor edition 2 before. That remains a free product so you can go ahead and download that. That's for free. Tabula Editor 3 is a paid product. The pricing is available on the website, so this is in US dollars. And so if you're using the desktop version, which is perfect for someone that just uses Power BI Desktop, um, it's $10 per month, or if you pay once a year, it's $100 a year. So just think about the amount of time that you waste, potentially, when you're writing your DAX formulas and managing your models and think how quickly you would recover $100 over a 12 month period. And I'm going to show you just five things that are different inside Tabular Editor 3 versus Tabular Editor 2, which personally I think makes it well worth uh, the effort. I'm actually using the enterprise version, but um, all of these features that I'm going to show you are available within this desktop version. All right, so I've downloaded and installed Tabular Editor third edition and once you've done that and you launch Power BI Desktop you'll find that it appears here on the external tools toolbar. You can see I still have the second edition which is the free version but I'm uh, using this one now. So I'm going to launch Tabular Editor and while it does that the first thing I'm going to look at is this one here, editing measures using IntelliSense. This is actually one of the main reasons I didn't do my DAX editing inside Tabular Editor second edition is because it didn't have IntelliSense and it just made it a lot harder to write those formulas. So I have this on another screen, just let me bring it down. Okay, so I've still got Power BI Desktop running behind Tabular Editor. Normally I'd have this on a second screen and I'll cover that as one of my other points. The layout is really up to you how you want this screen to lay out. But the first thing I want to show you is this DAX format editing. So I'm going to come in here. I've got quite a few DAX formulas here already. But if I wanted to say take this one here, I'll just zoom it up a bit. So now notice that the name of the measure is over here and also up here. Notice there is no equal sign. So tabular editor removes the equal sign. So no need to put that in there. And I can go ahead and make any change that I want to here. So I could say all products and you can see how the IntelliSense is working. If I wanted to do um, all products category, I could just go ahead and do that. So just having that IntelliSense is a real uh, winner and it means that you can go ahead and make these changes. Now I'm just going to go out of full screen mode here and once I make this change, I just click here. So I go save and then when I come back here and go to my sales table and I'll find my total all sales. You can see that that formula has already been reflected here. If I tried to do the editing here, of course you can do that, but I'm sure you have noticed, particularly as your models get large, that when you do that you get this sort of spinning wheel to say working on it, working on it, and depending on how big your model is, that can actually take 30 seconds or 60 seconds, which is really annoying. But when I come back here into Tabular Editor, I can change it here, all products. I hit save and it almost instantaneously gets updated here and it's certainly much quicker than, um, than doing it directly inside um, Power BI Desktop. Okay, so that's the first one, edit measures with IntelliSense. The second one I want to show you is DAX formatter integration. Now if you've ever had problems writing your DAX formulas, and you would probably cut and paste them from within inside Power BI Desktop, paste them into DAX Formatter and then paste them back into Power BI Desktop again. But now we've got this integration with DAX Formatter, so I'll jump over here. I do have this measure. This is quite a long measure here to demonstrate the point. And now all you have to do to format this measure is come up here and click on the DAX Formatter button and it goes ahead, punches the formula out to the API, formats the measure, places the measure back inside Tabular Editor and then when you hit save here that formatted version of the measure gets saved back into your Power BI desktop file. All right, the third thing I'm going to show you is, is a really super feature called DAX scripting. So I'm going to come over here to the sales table and I'll right click and select this option script DAX. 
and what happens is tabular editor generates this long script containing all of your measures that were in that table now this has a number of uses it can be used for documentation but it also can be used to copy measures between one table in one power bi file and a similar um, power bi file that is also open in, on your computer so you can save this DAX script so that's very good but you can also come in here now and make uh, mass changes to all of your measures before making commitments and so for example let's say I wanted this to be clothing and let's say just arbitrarily instead of total invoices I'm just going to divide this by 10 so I can make as many changes as I want notice I can also make changes to the formatting string here and so um, you can cut and paste those formatting strings up and down these measures I can just come here turn this one um, this one doesn't make any sense but if I wanted well I want maybe I want to put comma separation for the total customers so just much easier than having to go through each of these individual formula I can put um, this same here making as many changes as I want once I'm satisfied I'm going to click this button here which is apply and then also sync those changes back to Power BI desktop so I click apply and sync and that's it all those changes um, should now be in Power BI Desktop. So let's go and have a look at a couple of them. I had average transactions per invoice. You can now see it's divided by 10. My total sales of bikes. You can now see it's actually total sales um, of clothing. Okay, the next one I would like to show you is called Peak Definition. Now, I actually didn't know that this was here, but Daniel Oetker, the, the guy that wrote tabular editor actually told me about peak definition and so let me show you what that does because this is really cool as well so I'll come over here maybe I'll come into the expression editor and I'll find total sales of bikes and if we look at total sales of bikes notice that this total sales here is in my measure if I hover over this measure and right click you see this peak definition when I click on that it gives me a line of code underneath now you can see that there's actually a screen resolution here but it actually shows me what the formula for total sales is directly underneath this screen I'll jump over here and I'll do it inside this thing here so if I come in here and go peak definition once again notice how it gives me a peak into that underlying measure I can do this for anything so peak definition over here now at the moment um, it looks like there's a screen um, scaling resolution here but I'm sure that will be fixed fairly soon so yeah I really like this peak definition so while I'm at it and we're talking about this peak definition you can also use this right click inline measure so look at what happens here when I do this what it does is it takes that measure total sales and it replaces it with the contents of the total sales measure so this is a really quick and easy way of expanding your formulas if you want to remove these nested measures and go back to the source code so I can right click inline measure and it replaces that and then I can right click inline measure and it replaces that and of course if I run that now so just make sure I get the right one so this is percentage of all product sales I'm going to execute that script and save and then percentage of all product sales I'm going to have a look at that in the expression editor and I'm going to zoom it up and of course I'll do a DAX formatter and then I'll save that back to the cube as well so of course that was peak definition but in addition it was inline measure so both of those things you can also do this go to so if I'm here go to definition it basically takes you to that measure okay so the last thing that I want to cover is this concept of uh, multi-screen support so this is also new in tabular editor 3 and it just means that each of these windows basically can float in its own right and it's pretty hard for me to show you in this video what's going on but I can literally pick up this one window and I can take it off of my monitor and put it onto another monitor and so each of these individual windows basically floats in its own right and so if you've got two or more monitors um, particularly if you've got three monitors you can actually split tabular editor over a couple of those monitors and still have power bi desktop on on your screen 
when you click the save and commit those changes back to Power BI Desktop, you will see them all appear in real time inside um, Power BI Desktop. So that's it. They're the five features that I really like. Now I've tried to limit these to features that I think everyone would get some benefit from and just the performance improvements alone of being able to edit measures without having to wait them to grind over. Um, I think that's worth uh, the cost of the software as it is. But put your comments in below. Let me know what feature you really like. Um, one of the challenges of new software is discovering things that are really useful. I do have some other blog articles that cover some of the features that are in Tabular Editor 2 that are also in Tabular Editor 3. So be sure to have a look at those as well.